All right, I'm starting this video right back where we left off in the last one that I uploaded. You know, we lost Johnny. You've seen that. And then uh, just a couple of weeks later, my mother passed away. So uh, it's been kind of struggling around this area for a while. We've, uh, yeah, we've really uh, had some hard hits, but uh, good Lord is uh, is with us. And uh, we appreciate your prayers for all that's been going on. All that knows what's been going on with that. But uh, anyway, we're uh, I'm back with you. We're going to try to get this thing going again a little bit and see what happens. Uh, I actually about when I say I kill my YouTube channel, uh, I got 25,000 subscribers. And when I would upload a video, I would get uh, maybe two, three, 400, 500 views on the videos. And it's kind of disheartening. And uh, so anyway, trying to figure out what's all going on. And I know everybody out there that's got a YouTube channel is trying to figure out the analytics. They're trying to figure out what tags to use and uh you know what the secret recipe is for views and uh you know it when you start a youtube channel the only thing you can think about is video content i need video content video content video content and that's actually the secret to it as long as you're posting videos every single day twice a week three times a week your channel will grow and uh, mine actually i think i got the twenty-five thousand uh subscribers through the shorts and I found out that people that watch shorts don't watch the long form videos. I even tried to uh, promote one of my videos, which it got a lot of views, but it didn't get any subscribers. So I think that's a waste of time. And uh, like everybody else, you see somebody doing something on uh, YouTube, just like uh, Vice Grip Garage. He's got, uh, will it run home? Will it drive home? You know, he goes out and he buys a car in the middle of nowhere and tries to make it home. I'm not doing that. I'm really not. That's not my thing. Will it run and drive? That was a thing for a while. So we'd go out and try to find a car and get it running. Will it run and drive? And so we went through all that. But this is the problem that I have. I have a lot of cars that I have collected over the years uh, and my dad that have been sitting. And that's what we actually started the video channel doing. We started working on uh, our own cars that we've had here. And then you get the fever for views and all that because you think you're going to make a lot of money. Uh -huh. I don't know if you're going to make a lot of money. I mean, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month on a good day. And, uh, but, uh, so anyway, we've kind of went through a change. We've lost Johnny and, uh, and my mother passed away. So I'm going back to where we started and fix the stuff that we have. And trust me, we have plenty of cars to work on and I can show you a few. I've actually wrote them down on the table where I can actually talk about them as we're, uh, we're going. So I'm going to, have to put my spectacles on. Uh, some of the stuff that we got, uh, one of the things that I'm pretty excited about is the uh, Clyde Torkel Chicken Pit Special. I am uh, going to build me one of them. I've been wanting to build one. If y'all have ever seen Stroker Ace, I've been wanting to build a uh, Clyde Torkel Chicken Pit Special ever since I've seen the movie, so I thought it'd be fun. And then I'm also friends with Tim Phillips, which is uh, Buford and Bandit Tribute. So y'all can Google Buford and Bandit. He's all excited about it. Uh, Sean Bailey is uh, Buford T. Justice, and uh, Tim Phillips is Burt Reynolds, and he looks just like him, and uh, Buford T. Justice, you couldn't get him no better than Sean Bailey does, so and uh, so I've run that by him. He's all excited about that. Uh, I've also got a Dodge Murata that I bought because it's actually just like the one that I was driving when I got married. It needs a motor. I've got a 360 to go down in it. The motor's frozen busted. I bought it like that. Chocolate brown, the only year they made the chocolate brown. And uh, this is identical to the one I've got. And then talking about uh, Burt Reynolds, uh, if y'all have ever seen the movie White Lightning, I love that movie White Lightning, and fell in love with the 71 Galaxy 500 that he had on that. This is actually a custom 500 that they had, but I've uh, always wanted one of them. I traded me up a 71 Galaxy uh, 500, got it, and it's been setting. It runs, it actually runs, but it needs brakes. Uh, I bought another one the other day, which is a 72 that I can get some parts off of because we're going to do the disc brake conversion and all that and then uh, get it painted chocolate brown. So I, I've got that. I've got this 68 Dodge Dart that's been sitting here. This car is a six owner car and it runs. I mean, it runs. It's an air conditioning car. I don't want to V8 it. I think I just want to go back with it, but it's just sitting here collecting dust because we've got on our mind that we have got to have content, have content. Uh, and then I've got the uh, 87 Dodge Diplomat, which is like brand new. I bought it from an a elderly lady that had it forever. I've got it. It needs a left front fender. And uh, then I've got the uh, Blues Mobile, which we built it, but the front end is just, we've worked on the front end. You can't hold it in a road. 
and it's it's a lot of fun, but it it drives awful. We can't. We've done everything we can think in the front end. So Kenneth Mayhem, he's got a YouTube channel. I'll post it up here where you can watch it. But he's got a junkyard. He's actually got one that he is going to uh, sell me the front end. We're going to take the whole K frame and all out from under it and put it in it, and uh, maybe that'll solve the problem. Because I just think the front it's been wrecked or something. The front we just can't. You can't. You can't hold it in a ten acre field. So that's got to be fixed. And he also has got a perfect fender for this car, same color and everything. So we're going to get that from uh, from uh, him. I've got the SS and Palace set in here that uh, the shifting solenoids in the transmission is not working right, so we have to manually shift it. I need to get it up and going. I got this 91 uh, LTD that needs a fuel pump. That's all it needs, and it's it's a good car, and I'd like to get it back on the road. Uh, I've got this Dodge Magnum that I traded up, and I've not had it very long, but... Uh, Treadwear does all these body swaps on cars, and so it's kind of got me in a fever to do some body swaps on this. And they're putting a 68 or 9 Dodge Charger on a Challenger, a late model Challenger frame. And I come across this Magnum uh, where a guy actually started a body swap and decided not to do it. So I got a real good deal in this. And so I got to looking, and I'm telling you, I think this 56 Plymouth Savoy, it's got the tall belt line. If, if you notice, the ta Challengers and the Dodge Magnum both have a tall belt line, which in a short little top on them so i'm thinking that this uh 56 plymouth uh there's one inch difference in the wheelbase which i don't think is going to be that big a deal and uh, so we're going to measure that out and see if that might work pretty excited about that and uh, also then we got the of course we started it and we got stopped we got the little uh geo tracker we got it running and driving there ain't nothing wrong with it we're going to do the body swap with the metropolitan y'all seen that uh, i've got the plymouth trail duster sitting here that just needs brakes we used to drive it all the time and it's just sitting there because all you worry about is content, content, content. And my aunt Betty has had this Plymouth Sports Fury since I was a kid. I remember riding in this car, going to Gatlinburg and all that in this car. She parked it to set for 20, 25 years. And she finally let me have it. 383 car. I'm sure it's going to run. I'm pretty excited about getting it back on the road. Uh, I've got the uh, Ford Fairmont. This is something that uh, I always like the tops on the little 79, 80 model Ford Fairmont. This is a factory V8 car. And uh, I went and put the LTD2 front end and rear end on it. We put the tail lights in the front end all on the LTD2. But the core support's different on the LTD2 than it is on the Fairmont. So I've got this Fairmont that I traded up. To, uh, I got from Nutshook's Junkyard that we're going to cut the core support out and put on the Fairmont where the fenders will work right because there's too big a gap on the fenders when we put it on. And while I was down there, I picked up this 79 LTD just because it's got the single headlights. Only years for the single headlights. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I like it. I do. And uh, and then I got Papaw Studio Baker. I want to do something with it. A four-wheel drive is kind of what we're thinking on that. Maybe, maybe. I don't know how it's going to work, but uh, I bought this uh, Ford Explorer, which is a V8 all-wheel drive, and I'm thinking it might work on it. So I don't know. We'll have to do some measurements. It's going to be pretty close. Uh, to get that done. If it don't, we'll do something else. It don't matter. And then I got the 76 Mark IV that I've had forever. This car runs and drives. I want to get it and get it painted. I got the 75 Cadillac Coupe DeVille that needs painted and uh, got it over at the body shop just sitting there collecting dust. And in the late 90s, they come out with a hard top for convertible Corvettes. And mine's an 84. I come across this top, got a real good deal in it. And we're trying to get it put on, but the bolts are all different. So we've about got it put on, which I'm sure y'all don't care nothing about that because that's just mainly just elbow grease and arguing about which way and when uh how it bolts on so we're working on that trying to get that done and i had to put a switch in it because the switch went bad uh which was a little aggravating i've got this one ton dodge that uh I, was a work truck for us when we had a, a underground telephone cable business the motor blowed up we put a full 40 uh high performance 440 out of a 69 dodge monaco uh, got it in a junkyard in Franklin, North Carolina, and it was a cop car. So it's exactly a, a high performance uh, police interceptor, I guess you could say, that's in this truck. Want to get it back on the road. Drop this tool bed off of it and put a cool bed on it. Get that thing going. I've got Mike in here working on, uh, don't ask me why, but anyway, it was a five-speed Chrysler LeBaron with a five-speed convertible. I thought, well, that's kind of rare, and it was really cheap, but it needs a clutch. So I've got Mike in here working on that.
I've got this. Uh, I got the Aspen sitting here. It needs to be sold. I got to get rid of that. So, uh, and we're still working on the little Dodge that we call Bernard, which was my grandfather's truck. He bought brand new. Uh, Johnny has passed away, but he was working on this thing more than I was. And he was very organized, put everything where it went, but uh, I didn't know which bolts went to where. So we've kind of been dragging that out and getting all that done. But I've got everything put together that he was working on to this point. Uh, got the interiors looking really good. I've got the seat covers redone and uh, our new seat covers that had made uh, from a little lady here in Hiawassee. It turned out really good. I've got to get them put back together and uh, get the seat in it. Got the carpet. I got to get the carpet in it. Uh, I got to get the sound. I got the sound deadener, but I want to get uh, some kind of insulation to go underneath the carpet. And uh, then a set of tires, wheels, got the wheels, got them polished, need to get them on and then take it over and get the exhaust put on it. And uh, then we got to figure out how to put the uh, trim on the side. It's got like two and a half inch trim on the side. Cannot find the little uh, clips at all, the little plastic clips at all. They just don't make them because there's not enough of them out there. People want them. So we've got to come up with something with that. So we've got a lot of stuff going on with Phillips Run Drip and Bubble Company. That's kind of where we're at now. I just wanted to uh, give a shout out that uh, we're just going to do our thing. We appreciate y'all watching and uh, all the comments, all the likes, and all the subscribers. But uh, I'm not going to chase these other YouTube channels around and try to be like them. I'm just going to be Phillips Run Drip and Bubble Company. Work on the stuff that we got. Put the videos out when we do. And uh, if you'd support us, we gladly would appreciate it. And if you don't, I understand a lot of y'all like them quick uh, videos coming out every week. But, uh, you know, I'm not I am not David Fryberger. I don't uh, we don't do a whole lot of that drag racing stuff. We are getting into some auto crossing. We're really excited about that. Got the vet cart. Finally got the uh, you know, we blowed the motor up in the vet cart and everybody's like, hey, you need to put a LS in. it." I didn't have an LS. I had a uh, Vortec in a garbage truck. So we're using the Vortec because I don't have a lot of money to spend on all these great upgrades and you get all these sponsors on your channel and that just makes it to where you, you know, the average Joe can't afford to go out and buy all this equipment, this high dollar stuff. So I just use what I got and you can have as much fun out there with junk as you can uh, with this high dollar stuff. And all they're doing is just selling you parts. You know, you need this sniper kit. You need that. You need the other. You don't. You can have as much fun uh, with an old beat up car out there that runs and drives as anybody with all the money that they can stand stuck in their car. So we're not going to be a big sponsored channel. We're not going to be a channel that uh, chases the analytics. There's a lot of channels out there trying to make it big with 2 million subscribers and, and they're chasing other channels ideas, you know, just like Vice Group Garage. He, he does that. Will it drive home thing? I ain't going to do that. I, you know, I ain't got it in me. Back when I was a kid, when we went anywhere in a car and only that's about the way it was, we didn't know we was going to make it back home. Not interested in that. Tired of uh, will it run videos? I ain't gonna do that. I'm just gonna fix what I got. Once you start the big sponsorship, then you're owned by them, and you got to promote their parts. And if you're like me, you can't run out and just buy LS and and all the computer stuff that goes on it, and all the computer junk. And they say, oh, you can put it. It's cheap. It's cheap. It ain't cheap. It ain't cheap. I don't care what they say. It ain't cheap. When you get into a five, six, seven, eight thousand dollar, that's a lot of money to me. I can't swing it, so I'm just going to use what I've got. You know, we're just doing what we're doing to have fun. This is just a hobby of ours that we enjoy doing. It's a place that I come and let my brain rest. I'm going to do with what i got because that's the way I've always been. I know the junkyard and get my parts. Uh, I buy cars on the side of the road when I see them, uh, if I see a deal somewhere. And uh, I don't need any more cars. I'm trying to stop buying cars because I've got too many the way it is. But if there's a deal come by, you know it is. You can't resist. You have to have it. Hopefully I didn't bore y'all too much with all this, but I do appreciate everybody that subscribed to the channel so far. And uh, we're going to put out what we got. And you can see, and this is just, the cars that I've showed you is just a few. And uh, that'll last us for the next five years. So might last longer than that because Mike, he's about as fast as a turtle with arthritis. But uh, anyway, we appreciate y'all uh, tuning in. Appreciate the subscribers. Appreciate the comments. And uh, hey, y'all keep building them junk cars keep putting them on the road and you know whether it's a fifty thousand dollar car or a five hundred dollar car they're as much fun as anything so get out there and do it it don't matter if your car is rusty or not if it's driving and you're having fun so be it that's what i say so till next time thank you so much